Hey there, it's Silver. This is Riven. So the original Riven was released in 1997. It was, of course, the sequel to Mist, and I imagine that when Cyan went to make Riven, they probably had a tremendous amount of weight on them, because Mist was one of the most influential puzzle games of all time. It became a huge success for them, so I'd imagine that the pressure they felt when it came time to create a sequel was probably huge but they actually did manage to do a really good job of it because Riven was also an extremely successful and influential game. In fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Riven went on to be the best-selling game of 97, like the number one. And although it didn't make the exact same crazy waves that Mist did, I don't think anyone was really thinking it was going to do that. That was sort of a lightning in a bottle kind of experience. It was still an extremely memorable and very fun if kind of obtuse and difficult sometimes puzzle game that uh, I ended up playing around 2000-ish because in 97 when this came out I was five years old so I wasn't really uh, playing games like this at that time per se but uh, around 99 or 2000 we finally got a PC that was like fully CD-ROM multimedia capable and I was actually able to play both Myst and this back to back. And I primarily cite this game specifically as one of the things that solidified my love for a really specific graphic style that uh, no longer exists, really. That sort of FMV pre-rendered background style that games like Myst and Riven used, as well as if you played a lot of like interactive encyclopedias and stellariums and stuff like that, you saw a lot of this same kind of FMV, lots of pretty buttons to press everywhere kind of setup where everything was highly interactive and it was just cool to see things like this moving on your PC, so it was impressive in its own right and didn't really need to be anything uh, especially complicated. So I really do think that there's something special, some sort of intangible quality about the atmosphere that uh, those art styles actually created. So when it came time to remake Riven, I was really interested to see what they would do because, you know, this is a game where you couldn't just look around wherever you wanted. Everything was pre-rendered. So taking that and making it into a fully 3D environment is going to be a hard thing to do, but it was actually even more difficult than I imagined it would be because they actually put out a bit of a letter to people that said, you know, by the way, when it came time to make this remake, when we went back to look at our old assets from the original 97 Riven, they were gone. Uh, they weren't there, and we weren't able to use our old assets in any way, even for reference or anything, because we don't have access to them anymore. So making this game had to be from scratch. And that in and of itself is really fascinating to me and really impressive that they managed to remake an entire game like that from scratch and still hit so many similar vistas and stuff. In fact, some of the vistas you'll come across in this game are like part for part identical with some of the stuff that you would have seen in the original Riven. For instance, when you first go to the prison island, the uh, screen that you'll see is like identical to the original screen. Or when you first make it to the age of Tay, it looks like it's right off of the original Riven box art. However, something that I really enjoyed was that even though they went for some of those like one-to-one -one recreations, the game itself is not a one-to-one -one retread of Riven. What you're playing here is a different Riven. It's not the same game. It hits the same points and the story is still intact, but some of the things you'll be doing, some of the places you'll be going, some of the puzzles you'll be solving, they're not the same as they were. So I think that the loss of their original assets, while a big shame for preservation reasons, also ended up being kind of unexpectedly fortuitous because it encouraged them to remake everything from scratch, which means while they were doing that, they may as well expand some stuff, change some stuff, add some new stuff. You know, if they're going to have to do everything right from the beginning, they may as well alter some things this time around. So what we've got here is a first-person puzzle game, and the puzzle solving in this game is kind of unusual for today's puzzle game standards because it comes from an age of point-and-click FMV multimedia puzzle solving where a lot of it was less about like pure mind-bending logic stuff, although there are some logic puzzles in this game, and it's more about like diegetic machinery and equipment and stuff in the environment that you have to interact with and figure out how it all works. 
So the main way it works is you're going to be plopped down on the starting island, Temple Island, and you got to kind of just figure everything out as you go. You have a very basic list of things that you're supposed to accomplish, but those are all very distant goals that you don't really know how to do at first. Instead, it's all about exploration and just poking things. That's pretty much the gameplay loop of Riven. You're going to explore places, and you're going to poke things and see what they do, and you're going to learn from what you poke to figure out what goes where until eventually you start to solve what you're actually supposed to do. And one of your first tasks is going to be to figure out how you get from island to island, because there are five different islands that you can actually go between in this game. And uh, they're technically all open from the start, it's just you gotta figure out how to get to each of them first. And as you go through the game, you'll start to unlock shortcuts back to previous islands, or even an entire system of e even more extreme shortcuts to all of the islands once you're later in the game. And once you've figured out how the basic traversal works, this gives you a list of puzzles what you need to solve, right? Like, once you have been to each island at least once, you'll kind of start to figure out what you need to be doing, and you'll start to find machinery and things that you can actually interact with. Because at first, some of the earlier puzzles you come across, you can't actually do anything with just yet. Those will be for later. So you'll instead need to do some exploring before you come across puzzles that you can actually complete. And Riven really is a game of mystery. The entire point of Riven is that you're in this age, this world that's written into a book, and you don't really know its history or what happened here exactly. You're sort of at the end of its civilization, and pretty much all of its inhabitants seem to have gone elsewhere, but you don't know why or where. And you're effectively following in the footsteps of this sort of corrupt, megalomaniacal uh, creator of worlds that you are intended to capture in a book, a sort of prison book, to keep him away from everything. He very much doesn't really care about the life of any of the worlds that he visits and sees everything but himself as just sort of a means to an end. And what this creates is a world that's full of machinery and things that you have no context for. So you're going to see all the infrastructure that he built up, all the ways to get from island to island, all the ways that these sort of other characters that came before you have, have done things in this world, and you're just going to have to figure out how they all work so that you can complete the work yourself and actually find and trap this individual while also finding and freeing someone else. So as you're exploring, you're going to come across various mysterious things, and it's your job to figure out how they work and how they can help you, as well as perhaps what original purpose they solved. Which means a lot of this game's puzzles are kind of about reading and uh, understanding the context for what all these things do and mean, and then using that knowledge that you gained from, from reading and from inferring how some of this stuff works to actually make it work for you and do what it's supposed to do. It could be something really simple, like just diverting some steam in a pipe, some geothermal power, to a pump to pump out the water in a cave so that you can explore the cave without it being flooded. But it could also be something really complex and involved that takes you, like, a long time to figure out. And that kind of brings us to how the puzzles work. So how do the puzzles in Riven work? What kind are we talking about? Well, that's the cool thing really about the original Riven and this one as an extension is that there's sort of a large variety of different sorts of puzzles that really go to various different skill levels. So you're going to find some basic logic puzzles and stuff that are pretty easy to understand and solve within just a minute or two of finding them. And then you're going to come across some more manual puzzles that are less about logic and more about coming across a mysterious piece of machine and you just gotta sort of press the buttons and twiddle the knobs and see what they all do to understand what you need to be doing. Like, for instance, opening the boiler room on Boiler Island is one of these. It's just, uh, there's no, you know, instruction sheet that tells you what all these levers and, and wheels do. You just move them and figure it out for yourself, and eventually you'll understand the logic at play here. You'll understand what each thing mechanically does and what the function of this building is, and once you do, you'll understand how to get past it. But then, in addition to those two types of puzzles that are more straightforward, there are also a few of the really significant large puzzles that span multiple islands worth of clues and things you need to gather, and notes you'll need to take to actually uh, complete things. I haven't taken notes for a puzzle game in a long time, but this game actually made me do it. The game has a really nice new notebook feature that's extremely useful and you will be using prodigiously if you want to keep these things available. Basically, you just tap the X key and it takes a screenshot of whatever you're currently looking at. And then you can hit escape and go to your notebook and it will 
show you all of your screenshots in chronological order so that you can refer back to anything you've screenshotted like that. So basically it's something that a lot of people do in puzzle games, but the game actually has internal support for it rather than it being something that you do outside of the game, which is really handy. And also something that I feel like I should mention, if you're playing on Steam and you hit shift tab, you'll bring up your Steam overlay. And uh, on the bottom left of the row of buttons that the overlay has, you'll see one that looks like a pencil. And when you click this, it brings up a notepad, and you can use this to take notes, and it will automatically save them, so you can shift-tab uh, back and forth between your overlay and the game and take notes for yourself. You want to do this. <laughs> there are several parts in the game where you will want some written notes to explain some things for yourself or to figure certain things out. There are moments in this game where for a couple of the more notorious puzzles, you will need to do things like learn two new numbering systems that have their own way of displaying numbers, and uh, also extrapolating what some numbers that you have never seen are just based on how the numbering system works from 1 to 10 and sort of figuring it out from there. You'll also need to memorize the uh, positioning and numbering of certain symbols that you'll find once you get access to this lens that allows you to see uh, invisible paint in the environment. So when you're trying to memorize a code of colors and symbols and then a code of different numbers relating to these colors and certain forces and things, and you got to do a little bit of math in a numbering system that is not Arabic numerals. It all means that you're gonna want to take some notes, but I really enjoyed that. I That was a feeling I haven't gotten in a long time from a puzzle game, and I really appreciate that this game managed to sort of coax that out of me, because like I said, it's just not a place that I've been in a while, that kind of puzzling, and uh, it felt really satisfying to solve it. Some of the more notorious puzzles that were in the original are still here, but they look a little bit different now. The uh, big animal totem puzzle is still here, but the solution and how you get the solution are not the same as they were in the OG Riven. And in fact, if you put in the original uh, animal order that worked in the game in 97, you get an achievement for it. The absolutely insanely notorious uh, colored marble puzzle from the original is still in this game, although it looks like this now. It works a bit differently, but it is, in my opinion, still just as difficult as the original, perhaps even more so. Uh, now, it's, it's different, but it's still recognizably the same sort of puzzle. And uh, I actually think this puzzle specifically is a really good sort of litmus test for the entire game's design philosophy. It's recognizably something that you will remember if you've played the 97 Riven, but it's new, it's different. It's expanded in various ways that make it not the same, but still carrying the same DNA. And I think that a lot of this can be seen in how you traverse the environment, because of course, in the original, you went from pre-selected paths to certain areas because everything was FMV and pre-rendered. But now you can explore things in full 3D, which means they had to make some of those original vistas have stuff behind them and stuff to the side of them. Because normally you couldn't see those places, so there's no need to, you know, make that a part of the render. But now you can just walk there. So you actually need certain places to have stuff behind them or stuff that you can see from a different angle than before because you can physically just walk now. Overall, I went into the Riven remake not knowing exactly what to expect, given the whole philosophy of needing to make everything from scratch again. I expected it to be Riven, but altered in different ways, and maybe more complicated in certain ways, and that's what I got. I got a Riven that has been expanded both in puzzling and exploration and stuff, and also in narrative, because the narrative can have some more facets to it now, some more angles that you couldn't see before, both literally and figuratively, and uh, this means that there's a lot more stuff to read. Uh, you'll find some really well-written documents that you can just take out at any time and read whenever you want. Uh, the downside to these is that they are written in a very pretty flowy cursive font that almost looks like it's probably been handwritten by the developers, I imagine. It doesn't look like it's sort of a typed cursive font, but uh, either way it looks really good. But if you're not used to reading cursive, then you may have trouble reading this. I have a feeling people might convince them to add some subtitles to it so that you can just read a typed version of it if you want to. I think it's beautifully written, but also it might be a little hard on some people's eyes. And overall, the experience has made me feel like this is a really good Riven to play if you've never played it.
Uh, you know, if you've never played the original, there's still a lot that you can get out of this game because it is such a good puzzle game in general with a really large variety of very fun, if sometimes quite obtuse, puzzles that are enjoyable to solve. So you don't have to have played the 97 game to actually understand what's going on here. This is a remake in the sense that it's from the ground up, so if you go into it knowing absolutely nothing, you will still leave it knowing Riven. And although there are moments where you'll get a little bit of extra value if you do know the original game just because of how certain things are referenced or certain uh, answers are changed and things like that, it also means that it actually might be a little bit more difficult for you if you know the original inside and out because of some of those expansions and changes. It means that things don't work like they used to work and some of the progression is different, so it's not going to be a one-to-one -one walk in the footsteps of the original kind of experience. I think the Riven remake is a fantastic puzzle game that adheres to an older style of puzzling that we don't see as much of anymore and still manages to modernize a lot of its facets to make it really fun for a modern puzzle game audience. So if you're a fan of puzzle games in general, of first person puzzlers, or you just like the idea of having a game that's focused entirely on exploration and puzzle solving, this is a really good one to try out because it's a super high quality version of that experience that may come from an older age, but you don't need to understand the hierarchy of late 90s puzzle games in order to get everything you can out of this version of Riven. So yeah, if you're a fan of these sorts of games like I am, then this is absolutely purchase worthy, even at full price. I think it's clearly made with a lot of love and uh, it's the sort of thing that I like to reward with lots of kind words and recommendations because I feel that this is the sort of passion that we need more of in the games industry. So I'll put the link in the description below this video to the Steam Store page for Riven if you wish to check it out yourselves. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time.